This video is a tutorial for Google Docs for the iPad. Google Docs is Google's equivalent of Microsoft Word and Apple's Pages. You can get it for free from the App Store and all you need to get going is a free Google account. Now whilst it doesn't have all of the features that Microsoft Word and Apple's Pages app does, it is still very capable and it has one or two things that you can't actually do with the competing apps. When you open Google Docs, you can see a screen which shows you all of the recent documents you've been working with. If we have a look at the top left of the screen, we can see an icon with three horizontal lines. And if I tap on that, a menu appears. At the top, we can see which Google account we are currently signed into. And it's from here you can add additional accounts and switch between them. Now below that, we have a menu which allows us to filter between the different documents that we have available to edit. The first item already selected is recent documents. Below that, we have starred. Starred acts a bit like a favorite method. You can select particular files or folders that you use frequently, star them, and access them quickly through this menu. Below that, we have shared with me. If anyone has shared a Google Docs document with you, these will appear here. We can also choose to have particular files available offline if we do not have internet access. Below that, we have a bin for any documents that we've recently disposed of. And then we have the settings menu. Here, once again, we can choose to switch to a different Google account. Below that, we have a toggle switch, which allows us to choose if we want recent files to automatically be made available offline. Below that, we can choose default apps. For example, if we have a hyperlink in a Google document and we want it to open in Chrome instead of Safari, we can do that here. The same works for email addresses and other apps. If we have a lot of documents that we need to search through, we can make use of the search function. This is the magnifying glass icon in the top right of the screen. In the bottom right hand corner, we can see a plus icon. And if we tap this, we are given two different options. The first of which is to create a new document using a template. Here we can see a number of ready-made templates available for us to begin working with. The second option is to create an entirely blank new document, and it's this that we're going to choose. Now we just have to enter in a name for this document. Now when we have a look at the user interface of Google Docs, we can see that Google has taken a leaf out of Apple's book. The emphasis here is on minimalism. That doesn't mean it lacks functionality, a lot of the functions are hidden behind different menus. First of all, let's have a look at some general document settings to change. In the top right hand corner, we can see an icon with three dots. We have several different options available to us here. The first of which is print layout. Now if we have a look at the Google Docs app, we can see that it's filled entirely by white space. We do not know where each page begins or ends. If we choose print layout, we can see the border around the edge of the document. This is far more useful if this is a document that you would eventually like to print. Just below that, we have a toggle switch for suggest changes. If you're working collaboratively with somebody else and want to suggest changes as opposed to make them permanently, you can turn this switch on. About halfway down this menu, we can see an item that says page setup. If I tap on this, I can change the orientation of the document, the paper size, and the background color. The final two options on this menu are to make the document available offline and to star the file. When we star the file, this makes it available in our favorites menu back on the original screen. The rest of this menu, we're gonna take a look at later on. There are two ways of entering in text into Google Docs. If you have a physical keyboard, you can type in straight away. If you don't have a physical keyboard, when you tap on the screen, the on-screen keyboard will appear.
In the top right of the screen, we can see two arrows. This is undo and redo. Now let's take a look at how to format the text. At the top, we can see a menu. By selecting an area of text, I can make changes to it using this menu at the top. I can make it bold or underline it, use a strike through, or I can change the typeface color. The next icon allows me to highlight the text. And further along, we have tools for alignment, or we can create a bulleted list. or a numbered list. If we are working with a line or a paragraph of text, we can use the final two icons to make indents. I can move the text to the right or back again to the left. If we have a look at the top right of the screen next to the three dots, we can see the letter A with three lines next to it. This is our editing menu. And from here, we have further text editing options. With some text selected, if I choose this menu, I get the same options as I did in the previous menu at the top, but I can also change the text style, the typeface, the size, the text color, or I can clear the formatting completely. This menu is over two different tabs. The first at the top, it says text, and over to the right, it says paragraph. If I choose a line of text now, I can choose the paragraph options. This gives me some of the same alignment and indenting tools as we saw on the previous menu. But in addition to this, we can also edit the line spacing. If I make a selection of text by double tapping on the screen and making a selection, I have the options to cut, copy, paste, add a comment if I'm working collaboratively, or change the text into a hyperlink. Now if you move our eyes back to the top right of the screen, next to the A with the three lines, we can see a plus icon. And if I tap this, I can add all sorts of different elements to my document. The first is a hyperlink, as we saw before, followed by a comment. And after this, we can choose to add an image. You can either choose an image from your photo library or use the camera on your device. Now I've added an image to my document, I can tap to make a selection. Around the edge, we can see a blue border and several blue squares. I can use this to resize the image. Just above this, there is a blue circle. If I tap and hold on this, I can change the angle of the image. Now with the image selected, if I go back to the edit menu, which is found in the top right corner, I now have some image editing options. First of all, I can choose how the image fits in with the text. For example, I can have the text wrap around the image itself. This allows me to place the image anywhere I'd like in the document. You also have the option to adjust the margins or to have the image fit in line with the text. Next, you can add a border color. and choose the width of that border. The style of the border can also be changed from a solid line to dots or dashes. Finally, reset image allows you to change all the formatting back to default. Back on the add menu, I have the option to add a table. When I choose this, I can choose how many columns or how many rows this table will have. 
tap insert table to add it to your document. To enter in text in the cell, I can tap on the cell and simply type. With the table selected, I can go back to the edit menu at the top right, and now I have some options to edit the table. For example, I can add a column to the left or to the right, a row above or below. I can change the fill color of the selected row or column, and I can change the style of border around the table. Below that, I can choose the row height or the column width. And if I select multiple cells, I can merge them. To make a selection of multiple cells, tap on one cell on its own. And we can see in the top left and bottom right corner of the cell, there is a blue dot. By tapping, holding and dragging, I can make a selection of multiple cells. If we go back to the add menu, I can add a horizontal line or I can add a page break. I can add page numbers. These can be added in the header or footer. And below that, I can add a footnote. For the next item I'm going to show you, I'm going to add a page break right at the beginning of the document, so my first page is blank. Back on the Add menu, I can choose to add a table of contents. This can be with page numbers or with blue links. If you choose blue links, by tapping on that menu item, it will take you automatically to the page. This is good for interactive documents. If your document is intended for print, you should choose with page numbers. The table of contents is populated automatically based on which parts of your document are selected as headers. This is back in the text styles features we saw at the beginning. If I tap on a title, go to the text edit option, I can choose to make it normal text or a heading, and it's the headings that will appear automatically in your table of contents. To add a header or a footer to your document, simply double tap on the very top area of each page. If you're working with a large document, you can make use of Find and Replace. This is back on our original menu, which is at the top right corner of the screen, which is the icon of the three dots. By tapping on this, the fourth option down is Find and Replace. Type the word you wish to search for. And in the second field at the top, typing what you'd like to replace it with. You can then replace items one by one or replace all of them at the same time by tapping all. Just below this on the settings menu, we have something called Explore. Explore allows me to make use of Google's search engine to quickly research or add other elements to my document without leaving the app itself. At the top, I can see a search bar, and from here I can tap and search for something. This gives me web access to allow me to copy and paste text straight into a document if I'm making a reference. This new part of the screen is separated into two tabs. I can see web, and next to that I can see images. If I tap on an image, I can choose to insert it. Just past halfway up on the right hand side of the screen, I can see the insert button. This quickly adds the image inside my document. If I wish to view the word count of the document that I'm creating, I can tap the three dots to go back to my settings menu. And about halfway down, I can see word count. This tells me how many words, characters, and characters excluding spaces I have. Two down from there, I can see details. 
This gives me some basic information about the document I'm working with, including its creation and modified date. The fourth option from the bottom is Share and Export. If I tap on this, I have several different options. The first option is to share. If you're working with others who also have Google Drive accounts, you can add their email address to allow them to edit this document collaboratively. Below that is another way of sharing a document, link sharing. By tapping this, your document becomes shareable and a link is automatically copied to your clipboard. You can copy this link at any time by choosing copy link, which is the third item down. If you wish to send this document by email, you can choose send a copy. Below that, you have the option to print, to save the document as a Word document, or to make a copy of it. When we've finished editing our document, in the top left corner, we can see a tick. Tap this tick and it automatically saves the document. Tap the arrow to go back to your original document selection screen. Now I have a document in place, I can show you some quick actions that allow you to make some quick changes. Back on this screen, we can see thumbnails of all the documents that we've worked with. Below each thumbnail, we can see the title of the document, followed by three dots. The three dots is a menu. This gives us a set of quick actions. Without opening the document itself, we can choose to save it as a Word document, to share it, add it to our starred folder, make it available offline, to share it, to rename, to move it to a different folder, to make a copy, to view the details, to print it, or to delete it. So that's it for this tutorial for Google Docs for the iPad. If you found this video useful, please like, comment and subscribe, and I'll be back soon with some more iPad tutorials.